All right, here we go, the building blocks of organic chemistry. We're going to organize this set of tables based on formal charge. We're going to also be looking at the number of domains across the top from 4, 3, and 2. And each row will represent a different atom, carbon down to fluorine across the periodic table. So carbon, in its neutral form with four electron pair domains, that can only be achieved if we have four single bond domains. If carbon has three electron pair domains, it'll have a double bond, and it'll have two single bond domains. If carbon has two domains, the only way we can satisfy the octet rule is with a triple bond and a single bond, or with two double bonds. All of these have neutral formal charge. You can check for yourself. What about nitrogen? Moving on down, nitrogen with four electron pair domains is going to be neutral if it has three single bond domains and one lone pair domain. It's going to be neutral with three electron pair domains if it has a double bond domain, a lone pair domain, and a single bond domain. And it's going to be neutral with two electron pair domains if it has a triple bond domain and a lone pair domain. Let's move on down to oxygen. We'll encounter the first time where we run out of, when we run into a limitation. First with four electron pair domains, we've got two lone pairs and two single bonds. With three electron pair domains, we've got two lone pair domains and a double bond domain. Those all satisfy the octet rule for oxygen neutral formal charge. If we were to try to come up with a building block in this gray box over here, you should find and you should work and struggle with this on your own. It's impossible. And the only way I can, at this point, try to describe it to you is if we focus on some sort of pattern. So in the pattern that we might see emerging, by the way, this chart looks very similar to the uh, table of octet configurations. And notice that uh, as we travel down this table, the number of lone pairs on each atom is increasing by one. So we started with carbon. There were no lone pairs. Nitrogen, every case, we all see that these building blocks have one lone pair and oxygen, as we move down, has two lone pairs. Well, if we were to think about two lone pairs, we can see why that's not a reasonable building block. It has the two lone pair domains, but oxygen doesn't have an octet of electrons. And so in this case, we can rule that out. In fact, you can convince yourself that all these gray boxes are impossible to achieve. And so finishing out the neutral building blocks, we've got fluorine with three lone pair domains and one single bond domain that puts the halogen fluorine in its neutral form. All right, let's move on to the negatively charged building blocks. I'll get you started, then why don't you hit the pause button on your QuickTime player, try to finish out the table for yourself, and then you can come back and review and see yours relative to mine. So let's start with negatively charged carbon, four electron pair domains. That's realized if we have three single bond domains and one lone pair domain, negatively charged carbon. With three electron pair domains, negatively charged carbon is realized with a double bond domain, a lone pair domain, and a single bond domain. And finally, with two electron pair domains, negatively charged carbon is realized with a triple bond domain and a lone pair domain. That gets you started. Why don't you pause your QuickTime player right here and we'll come back and take a look at how you did. So here's what your finished table should look like. Check your answers carefully against what I've drawn here. You'll notice that this also, again, looks very similar to the table of octet configurations. It's just been shifted by one row. Okay, we've just about uh, finished the tables. The positively charged building blocks are all that remain. I'm going to ask that you do this table on your own, except I'll ask that you wait on the positively charged carbon building block. That row is going to be an exception to the octet rule, and we're going to talk about that in the next webcast. So go ahead and do nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine positively charged. Pause your QuickTime player, and we'll come back and take a look. All right, so how'd you do? These are the positively charged building blocks of nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. We'll take care of positively charged carbon, an exception to the octet rule, in the next webcast.